The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. Once upon a time, there were three builders who worked in very different ways. They all lived in a town named Cabbageville. It's a sunny day in Cabbageville. The air is warm and dry. The birds are chirping. Gentlemen, busy day ahead. Still sticking with it, eh, Bob? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm a stickler for sticks. Hey, what about you? That is correct. I'm all about the hay. Hey, hey, hey. Whatever's the quickest and easiest. Well, boys, brick a leg. Huh? Brick a what? Brick. Break? See, usually it's break a leg, but since I'm the brick guy, I said... We get the brick part. Yeah, it's more the leg thing. Not getting that. These builders never agreed on much, especially on how to build a house. Larry would put a house any place, anywhere, as long as he built with straw. Hay bales stacked nice and neat and hardly weighed a thing. Hey! Hey! Hey? Hey! Hey! Mr. Lunt didn't care where he built, as long as he built with bricks. They were stackable and went up fast. Bricks, nature's rocks. Rocks are nature's rocks. Bricks, nature's stackable, interlockable, uh, rectangular, baked clay rocks. That's catchy. Bob built with sticks, wood to be exact. More importantly though, he thought long and hard about the best place to build. And having laid a strong foundation, he knew it was the kind of work that lasted. Strong. The town was proud of its homes and its builders. In fact, the first ever Builder of the Year award had just been announced. The deadline to win it was fast approaching. But so were three very important new citizens. Thinking of moving here? Good choice. May I suggest building a lovely straw house? No, 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 no. Moi requires sleek. Come on, it's cheap, it smells like the farm, and it's 20% more energy efficient. Larry liked to make up statistics. That's only 50% true. I dig efficiency. Watching my carbon hoofprint. Oh, eco schmeco. It's gonna smell like dust. What about bricks? Bricks are hard as bricks. Oh, catchy. Hear that? They love me. Well, sticks are strong, too. And when you lay a good foundation, they make a great house. Ah, oh, don't listen to him. Sticks are terrible for building. I tried them once and they fell right over. Uh-huh. Remember where you built that house? On the beach. On the sand. You need more than sand under your house. I learned that from one of the greatest builders ever, Old Man Zucchini. Sticks, bricks, toothpicks, forget about it. None of that matters if you don't got a strong foundation. It's all about the foundation. Listen up. Strong in the ground, you stick around. Uh -huh. hmm? This isn't just about houses. This is about life. God is our firm foundation. If we build our lives on his word, we'll stand strong when troubles come. It's a metaphor. Uh, I, I believe that's actually a simile. What are you, some kind of professor? Old Man Zucchini should know. He was the leading authority on the Master Builder's Handbook. Oh, you mean my booster seat. Booster seat books intimidate me. Trust me, the weatherman says a big storm is coming. It's big! Seriously, I'm talking rain! Woo! Everybody knows that 20% of all weathermen are 30% wrong 40% of the time. I don't even know what that means. No one did. All I know is that the stronger your foundation, the better. Ultimately, 
They each chose a different builder. We all like the tomato. Is that certified straw organic? <laughs> the, 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 the bricks are great. I mean, they're great. Wise, Wise choice. choice. Step one. The key to solid construction is a solid foundation. Dig six foot holes every three feet, pouring concrete set with rebar, ba ba da ba da ba da Wow, that's a lot of words. I've said it before and I'll say it again. A is for houses. Foundation schmoundation. That's just a racket started by the cement companies. My brick house will be stacked by lunchtime. And my lunchtime will be done by dinner time. And then I'll need a snack. Firm foundation. Uh, check. Yep, looks like I got everything I need to build this place on solid stuff. <gasps> everything but a song. It's okay if the going gets rough. Winds and rains may huff and puff. Sinking sand is not enough. Just build it on solid stuff. Take these bricks, lay them straight. I work fast, I don't have to wait. Built on mud, it looks just great with nothing on solid stuff. Who needs solid stuff? It's a lot of work and I'm not too buff. This soft land will be enough. Besides, my house is plenty tough. Why build it on solid stuff? Pack that straw, stack it high. My little piggy will be warm and dry. It's so awesome, I wanna cry with nothing on solid stuff. Who needs solid stuff? All that talking is a lot of guff. Old zucchini, I call Why build it on solid stuff? Why build it on solid stuff? We need solid stuff. Mark my words, it's gonna get rough. When the storm clouds hop and puff, you're gonna need solid stuff. Why build it on solid stuff? Hey, slow pokey, it's quitting time. Not for me. <laughs> That's because you'll spend so much time on stuff under the ground that nobody's even gonna see. I've already got the walls up and added a porch swing. I even put in a fireplace. Whoa, back up. Hey, look out! A straw fireplace? Really? What? Why not? <sighs> see you at the ceremony when I get that Builder of the Year award. This isn't about winning an award. That's what the person who loses usually says. With the houses almost done, the pig seemed happy. This little piggy had a latte. Oh yeah, that is a spot. This little piggy sent a text. LOL. <laughs> and this little piggy bought a Groupon for laser hair removal. This will save more so much time. But the houses in Cabbageville had never been tested the way they would be today. Oh, the storm was coming. Rains can turn a mountain stream into a raging river. And that raging river can send a whole lot of water down a mountain at once. Yes, Wolf River was flooding into the Huff and Puff Dam and fast. Wolf, Huff and Puff, huh? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Guess not. Took you long enough. I just want to make sure it's as strong as it can be. Certainly looks good to me. This house is simply gorgeous. Uh, you must be Bob, the builder. <laughs> That'll never stick. Is it for sale? Oh, no. Th this house is spoken for. <gasps> then I want one just like it. I want to live in an award-winning house. What do you mean by that? Uh -oh. Who will be Builder of the Year? Looks like Bob's got the edge. The judges are already on the lookout. And they like what they say. Oh, you're too kind. And now I'm blushing. You are? There is no way scrawny sticks are going to win over beefy bricks. Bob's house isn't even finished yet. You should see mine. I got a lot of cool stuff in my house, too. But you still don't have any kind of foundation. Mine has a game room. A swing set. A, a ping pong table. I'm thinking of putting in a hot tub. Really? I've always wanted a hot tub. The hot tub isn't nearly as important as the foundation. Hot tub? I'll have a hot tub in there by dinner time. I'll have mine in by lunch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We will see, won't we? Very well, boys. I'll take a tour tomorrow. It's not about hot tubs and awards. 
It's about what's underneath it all. But no matter how hard he tried to tell them, it seemed that Bob was only talking to himself. I could talk to you. But I'm the narrator. Uh, that would be awkward. <laughs> oh, if only Larry and Mr. Lunt had listened. If only they understood what mattered most. Is that the luxury tub deluxe model? The last one they had. Then it's the one they were holding for me. First come, first serve. That's the golden rule. That is not the golden rule. It's he who calls ahead gets the hot tub. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Too bad. Hey, you don't mess with another man's hot tub. Should have seen this coming. They say that 85% of all floods are started by water. Guess we're just gonna float away. No, wait. We can jump onto that bridge in straw mills. Nope, that was one of mine. I know. We'll grab onto that brick gazebo in Brick Landing Park. No, there it goes. There. Hey, piggies, come on, let us in. Not, Not by, by the hair of our chinny chin chins. Chin chin. Uh, what? is hairless, thanks to Lizer. <laughs> nice hot tub. Eh, it's not so hot. It could use a paddle. Come on, let's get to higher ground. Uh, then we can get to work repairing the dam. Thanks, Bob. Maybe we can build it on some of that solid stuff you keep talking about. After the town dried up, Bob was indeed awarded the prize for Builder of the Year. Thank you, everyone. I'm honored. I'm just glad everyone is okay. Old man Zucchini? You better believe it. You done good, kid. You followed the words in a book instead of sitting on it. Strong in the ground, you stick around. That's one of my favorite similes. It's actually just a catchphrase. I beg your pardon, college boy. Hey, Einsteins, you learn your lesson. Foundations, houses, God's word, huh? You get that? But the other two pigs decided they wanted houses with strong foundations too. Hey, it looks like I'm gonna be busy. Y you two wanna come work for me? You bet. 
But I guess I'm gonna have to say goodbye to my bricks. Actually, no. Uh, bricks are great. You just need to give them a firm foundation. Oh, good. I can keep my straw then. Uh, no. Probably better ditch the straw. Okay. Let's get to it, boys. We're building on... A firm foundation. Whenever trouble comes to Cabbageville, we'll stay warm and dry. When the winds get rough, when they huff and puff, and the rains fall from the sky. When trouble comes to Cabbageville, we'll heed the master's plan. The best location on a firm foundation, all else is sinking sand. That was a pretty good parable, wasn't it? Actually, that was a... Oh, you're right. That was a parable. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Letty. The part of the show where Letty comes out and sings a silly song. I remember the day you came my way. I was so young. My chewing days had not begun. Then I saw you protrude. Oh, there you are. I put away my baby food. When you peeked out at me, I knew it was meant to be. It was meant to be. My only tooth, my lonely tooth. My all by itself in the middle of my mouth, too. Happy tooth day to you. up so fast and as time passed la, la, I thought la. there'd be more two, three, or maybe four but la, there you la, stood la. so white la, la, nobody's la, to la. your left or right la, la, and I knew I was done you'd be my only one my only two my only two my all by Tuesday to you. Happy, I got you a present. Happy, Since you've been all by yourself, happy, I got you some buddies. Happy, some tooth happy, buddies. Happy, happy tooth to you. Happy, 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 happy My only tooth, my lonely tooth, my all by itself in the middle of my mouth tooth. That's okay, Larry. We all got you two tooties. Happy tooth day, happy tooth day, happy tooth day to you. Tune in next time to hear Bob say, happy tooth day, Larry. Time, you've probably heard various rhymes from an old mother bird. If you remember these tales and enjoy listening still, then you might pay a visit to the town of Gooseville. From days spent in diapers, one yet may recall a brief tale of an egg who fell off a wall. If you assumed it complete, then it's probably time to hear unabridged Humpty Dumpty's full rhyme. As the mayor of Gooseville, Humpty's main chore was helping his neighbors. But lately, old Dumpty preferred just to snore. <laughs> From loving his neighbor, Humpty's heart had recoiled and lately had seemed a little hard-boiled. From the stress of his job, his shell now showed crackage. How he longed to escape on a vacation package. 
maybe one day, pondered the mayor with longing, just as his doorbell started ding-donging. to come back later. I'm trying to repair my shell. But I want to lend a hand out to any needs that stand out. I could be a neighbor saver. <laughs> You're a great debater, but this mayor's opting out. Opting out? He heard Baby Bear say, I don't have time to help my neighbors today. But I made a list and checked it twice all of our neighbors who've been naughty or nice no all of our neighbors who need help or advice eh, what a long list of favors more favors than there's neighbors i don't have time to help them out don't be silly mr mayor you're the greatest neighbor it's what the mayor's all about huh. i guess we best get started before my shell gets parted. Time to be a friendly neighbor. Or a more exhausted mayor. Our friends could use some help now. No chance you'd come back later. You're so silly, Mr. Mayor. Our neighbors need some help being out. Why don't we start with little Bo Peep? Guess what has happened to all of her? Sheep? This isn't the first time that I've heard this rhyme. I don't know anyone cooler than you. One day, I'd like to be mayor, too. It's true, Bo Peep's sheep were rarely beside her. And today, they all seemed especially hyper. Wow! Watch where you're going. You could have broken my shell, said the delicate mayor with a frustrated yell. Little Bo Peep, help me, please. I've lost my sheep. They all seem to be playing hide and go seek. You need to remember to close the sheep's pen. If you do, then I'm sure this won't happen. Ah! What do you think he was going to say? Probably again. How could you tell? Because it rhymes. On the back of the sheep of Little Bo Peep, Mayor Humpty rode briskly all over the streets. But when the sheep stumbled on a stack of burritos, Humpty flew through the air like a startled torpedo. As Mama Bear placed a lovely bow in her hair, Humpty landed head first in her living room chair. Mayor Dumpty, my goodness, what a pleasant surprise. I did not expect you till a quarter past five. As Mayor Dumpty rolled so his head pointed upward, <laughs> Mama Bear told him, I am indubitably flustered. We have neighborhood problems we'd like to address. I mean, would you just look at that mess? It was sad but true that living inside that kooky old shoe was old Mother Hubbard who had so many children she didn't know what to do. Oh! <laughs> it's simply a terrible sight, don't you think? Our property value's probably gone down the sink. Neighbors who lack such obvious manners drive me totally crazy. Crazy bananas! I'm coming for you, you crazy furball! But wait! We're not done complaining at all! Yeah! Hi, neighbor. Wanna go jogging or lift up some weights? Today is a very important date. I've gotta be nimble. I've gotta be quick. Would you? Because I'm about to jump over a candlestick. Uh, right. You know, I'll catch you later. As Humpty Dumpty ran up the hill and back, he nearly tripped right over Jill and Jack. They desperately wanted help with their art, because according to them, The whole world, world is falling, falling apart. apart! Me and Jill ran down the hill to fetch construction paper, but we both fell down and broke our crayons. <laughs> then we lost our stapler! <laughs> <laughs> well, have you tried looking at the, uh, well, the well? And why would we look at the well, pray tell? Well, um, in case your stapler fell down it. Farewell! And the mayor ran away, leaving more neighbors <laughs> in dismay. Hello there, little lost sheep. Would you happen to be looking for something to eat? 
Well, here's a little treat. And just as Goldilocks fed him some straw... I gotcha! <gasps> Sorry about that. My, your screams really are something. It's quite a surprise finding the mayor on my street. Maybe you could help me find some porridge to eat. Porridge? Why would you want to eat that gooey goo? Go and ask your mom for some toast and beef stew. But porridge is what I like eating most, more than peanut butter, jelly, or beef stew with toast. Of course, my tummy is pretty rumbly today. I could probably eat a whole porridge buffet. How about your neighbors? You should knock on their door. Perhaps they'd have some extra porridge to pour. <laughs> Although he had helped only little Bo Peep, may a Dumpty return to his own home to sleep. Don't worry, Mr. Mayor. It's just me. And the rest of the town. They all needed help and you weren't around. So I brought them all here to the foot of your step. Mr. Mayor! What is it, Ms. Muffet? I need your help badly. There's a thorn in my tuffet. Forget about that. What about my front lawn? I need your help training for the decathlon. A stapler we never found at the well. All we located was this old cowbell. With so many neighbors who needed attention, his poor shell continued to crack from the tension. What should I do? He wondered aloud. Well, on his front door, the neighbors did pound. And that's when it hit him. Like a full ton of smackage. I'm going to go on that vacation package. While Humpty escaped from his mayorly house, he did so as quiet as a little... Hi! Ah! Oh. He did so as quiet as a really loud mouse. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, do you have just a second for me? My bug net needs fixing, you see? Humpty gathered his thoughts with some consternation. Baby bear, I'm sorry. I I'm on neighbor vacation. I I've had enough helping everyone else. I'd like to, right now, help only myself. Oh, okay. Baby bear said, kind of sad. And Humpty, in turn, felt a little bit bad. And when I say little, I mean just a tad. Uh, yes, I'm looking for Gooseville's Great Wall Vacation. Then look no further than this elevator, sir, for the elevation vacation to which you refer. <laughs> okay. Um, shouldn't we be moving by now? Whenever you're ready. The bellhop said with a bow. Then Humpty began to have the realization that Gooseville's Great Wall was a help yourself kind of vacation. Humpty Dumpty scaled the tall wall. Humpty Dumpty had a few minutes to stall. From all the exhaustion, Humpty started to swoon, causing a drop like a big lead balloon. What a close call. With such a delicate shell, I'm sure you're afraid to fall. <laughs> Where's all the hammocks? The, the tea, lemonades, and siesta mariachis playing nap serenades. I'm sorry, sir, but didn't you see? Everything here is B-Y-O-M-L-A-T. B-Y-O-M-L-A-T? Bring your own mariachis, lemonade, and tea. What about napping supplies? The sad mayor said. Yeah, it's also B-Y-O-N-S-A-P. Bring your own napping supplies and a bed. I've worked here for years, and I can attest that helping yourself is what we do best. <laughs> But when Humpty considered his neighbors in town, his frown began turning and stopped upside down. From all of the stress, he was finally free, which made Gooseville's Great Wall the best place to be. And so Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great 
shawl that his grandmother gave him for such an occasion. Who needs all those neighbors with so many needs? I'm doing much better helping just me. <laughs> oh, perfect. But Baby Bear was still being a kind-hearted fellow. Aren't you a helpful lad to remove a thorn from my pillow? And amongst the flamingos, Goldie stood in a chair, hoping tonight her mom would prepare... A great bowl of porridge which we all could share. Meanwhile, Humpty was feeling quite dumpy. Not comfy enough and clearly not snoring, he was finding this place to be rather boring. And trying to look for a new thing to do, he saw something which promised a spectacular view. Nothing spectacular that I can see. Just a town still in need of assistance from me. But then Humpty saw something which made his heart heavy. Sweet little Goldie and family with just two strings of spaghetti. Mama, is there any porridge I can have? Spaghetti gives me the hiccups <coughs> real bad. I'm sorry, sweet Goldie, her old mother said. But I've no other food to give you instead. <coughs> Why, that little girl should have more food to eat. What uncaring neighbors she has on her street. If I weren't up here and she weren't down there, I'd give her every last bit of food I could spare. Huh? What are you doing? Don't walk on their grass. Mama Bear will go bonkers if she thinks you've trespassed. Hello? No one loved porridge more than Ma and Pa Bear. So Goldie dropped by, hoping they'd have some to share. Porridge! What are you doing? Don't eat the bear's food. If they find you, they'll be in quite a bad mood. No, no, no! That one's so hot, it's steaming! Ouch! But Goldie was too distant to hear Humpty screaming. That one's so chilly, it may give you frostbite. Well, that one should probably be about right. But according to Goldie, it was more than just right. That bowl of porridge was just... Dynamite! Now get out of their house or you'll be in a pickle. And that's when the telescope ran out of nickel. Oh, I simply can't fix every problem I see. I have plenty to do, taking care of just me. And so Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great ball of yarn from which he would knit while ignoring his neighbors and kind of sort of feeling bad about it. And while Humpty remained in his vacation bubble, sweet Goldilocks fell more deeply in trouble. Immediately after her warm porridge snacking, she said to herself, I'm ready for napping. <sighs> But just then downstairs, that family of bears sat down to eat in their dining room chairs. And when Mama looked down at their table so fair, her heart was a flutter and she felt quite a scare. Baby, didn't you used to have porridge in there? Shh, I think maybe I heard something upstairs. Look, there's somebody sleeping in my bed. Then a startled Goldie screamed with dread. <laughs> Street was heard everywhere, even all the way up to the ears of the mayor. <laughs> what in the world is going on here? What was going on here, you might have guessed, was the makings of an epic nursery rhyme mess. One of Baby Bear's spiders frightened Miss Muffet, who jumped up and down on top of her Muffet, spilling her curds and whey on the hill, while Jack and Jill looked for their stapler still. Both of them slipped and fell on their backs, then slid down the hill and bumped into Jack. And although he was nimble, and although he was quick, unfortunately Jack ran into his stick, which proceeded to shoot a flame in the air and landed atop the very barn where little Bo Peep keeps the rest of her sheep. Not knowing what was happening, the sheep went insane, charging right toward Humpty like a woolly bullet train. Sheep! Ah! Frightened creatures rammed into the brick with a smack, fracturing the wall, causing Humpty to fall and land on his back. Help! I've fallen and I can't get up! Mr. Mayor! Mr. Mayor! Oh, 
good. Uh, Mama Bear, could you? Mr. Mayor, I have terrible news for you. Gooseberry has been ruined, and no one knows what to do. Well, don't look at me. It was clearly the fault of little Bo Peep. What made all this mess was her stampeding sheep. My sheep and I are not chiefly to blame. Jumping Jack's candle set my barn into flame. I'm usually nimble and really quite quick. Jack and Jill are the ones who caused me to trip. But none of this would have happened today. If Miss Muffet hadn't spilled her curds and whey. Uh... How could you make such a boorish connection? It's the fault of this bear and his bug collection. No, no, no. The fault belongs to this lass there. Yeah, her scream right. was so loud it broke all our glassware. This trespassing girl lacks all sorts of manners. What more, I'm afraid, I've gone cuckoo bananas. I'm sorry. Goldilocks said, looking blue. I didn't mean to trouble any of you. When I was hungry for food, I came to your door, but I won't make that mistake anymore. <gasps> Does this mean you're not gonna help me find all my sheep? Your sheep? What about our house and our lawn? Our stapler! My tuffet! The spring marathon! But Humpty was thoughtful as he realized that he was the cause of poor Goldilocks' cries. Excuse me. Excuse me. As your mayor, I've made a lot of mistakes. And right now, I have a confession to make. This mess is my fault because I didn't care. If only I'd been more like you, baby bear. In the silence, the townsfolk all felt Humpty's pain. Then upon introspection, they all took the blame. I see that at times we have each been uncaring. From now on, we commit to be helpful. And sharing. Oh, <laughs> well then, if someone could help me get unstuck from this plight, we have now a matter we need to make right. Oh, hey, hey, what are you gonna do with that? Ow, that's a lot of pressure. Compressing, compressing! Ah! Humpty Dumpty shot up like a big cannonball. And Humpty Dumpty had yet another great fall. But this time, his neighbors were there after all. And though Humpty Dumpty's shell was quite cracked, his friend needed help, and he needed to act. <clears throat> Little Goldie, we're sorry for being unkind. Will you forgive us, my dear, for being so blind? I called every neighbor here on your street to help you and your family get more to eat. Is that... Porridge? As your mayor, I'd like to officially say we'll all be better neighbors starting today. So on behalf of all of your friends, let the porridge festivity... And then it happened again. But this time, when Humpty Dumpty recovered, the town was amazed to discover that the porridge filled cracks and bonded so well, it instantly mended Humpty's eggshell. Now, every time Humpty looks at the wall, he remembers his great disastrous fall with no one aware, till along came a bear who knew what it meant to be a neighbor who cares. When you get stuck in a pickle, a friend will lend a little hand. When you're short a dime or nickel, a friend will lend a little hand. When the hill is way too steep, then a friend will lend a little hand. Chasing sheep, then a friend will lend a little hand. Whether little or a big friend, whether tiny or a tall friend, there's no such thing as a small friend. But no one said I can do it all, friend. La 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 la. When your patience isn't lasting, a friend will lend a little hand. A friend will lend a little, 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 a friend will lend a little. My friend Belinda Whittles. A friend will lend a little. Once upon a time, there lived a king. Like other kings, he had a really neat castle to live in and a lovely little kingdom to rule. But unlike other kings, this king spent most of his time in the bathtub. Oh yes, his name was George. King George. 
<laughs> um, King George, uh, your highness, do you think you'll be coming out anytime soon? We have important business to discuss. What do you think, Ducky? Oh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, not right now, Lewis. We're not finished with our royal bath. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> important, sir. Oh, Ducky, why can't they just leave us alone? Yes, it was a little odd. You see, the kingdom was at war. The Great Pie War, to be exact. And usually, when a kingdom was at war, the king would, uh, help. It'll have to wait, Louis. First things first. Right, Ducky? King George loved to take baths. But most of all, King George loved his rubber ducky. Some kings love horses, and some kings love cattle. Some kings love leading their troops into battle. But me, I'm not like that. I find that stuff yucky. I'd much rather stay in my tub with my ducky. Because I love my duck. Uh, sir, if I could have a minute. Love my duck. There are some things we must discuss. I love my duck. See, there's a war and wealth, we're in it. Love my duck. Oh, I don't mean to make a fuss. Then don't. Sing with me, Lewis. Huh? Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> because he loves his duck. And that is why I can't be bothered. Loves his duck. With a particular the war. He loves his duck. Cause quite unlike my dear old father. Loves his duck. I find it all a bore. Now concentrate, dear Lewis. And I think you will agree. The most important person in the whole wide world is me. So please don't drag me down with all the people and their troubles. Go run some water in my tub to freshen up my bubbles. Oh boy. Because I love my duck. I don't know why I even bother. Love my duck. You just can't reason with this guy. Because I love my his duck. duck. It's time to face the facts. I think we're all a little stuck. So let the army run on my I fear the kingdom's out of luck. Because I love my his duck. duck. Yes, undoubtedly we're stuck. So let the army run on my Oh boy, we're really out of luck. Because I love my Hey! What's that? Give me a quarter. I want it. What? The house? No, the ducky. Oh, uh, but you already have a ducky. What are you saying? That I shouldn't have whatever I want? Well... I must have it, I must get it, you must go and get it for me. If you want me to be happy, then you'll show me you adore me. Don't rest another minute till it's sitting here before me. If you want to do your best, I would suggest you go and bring me back that duck. 
But, sir, if I could just jog your memory, you already have quite a few duckies. Those are yesterday's duckies. Huh? Well, these are all perfectly good duckies. Why, most of your loyal subjects would love to have even one ducky this nice. I don't like these, I don't need these, I don't want these any longer. My affection for those duckies isn't getting any stronger. To say I can't have what I want, you couldn't be more wronger. Don't ask me to explain, there will be pain if you don't go and get that duck. Our conversation is over. Did you say wronger? What? I don't know. Perhaps. It's more wrong, not more wronger. <laughs> it had to rhyme. Don't question a king's grammar. Now go and get that duck. But King George, we can't just barge in and take Thomas's duck. Why not? Well, he'll tell people, and then everyone will think you're going to come in and take their stuff. You can't run a kingdom that way. No, oh, all right. Well, then we'll have to do something about Thomas. What? Come in! Ah, Frederick, my favorite general. How goes the war? As Lewis has told you, the pie war has grown ferocious. We need more men at the front. Lewis didn't tell me that. I was trying to, but you wouldn't come out of the... Hmm. More men, eh? Yes, we need more men. You know, I believe Thomas would like to help. Thomas? He's rather small. He's surprisingly strong for his size. As you wish, sire. Your Highness! And one more thing, Cedric. Put Thomas at the front of the battle. Then have everyone else step back. But he'll be creamed! Your king has spoken. As you wish, sire. Lewis, meet me at dusk at the east gate. We've got a little job to do. It was terrible. Lewis didn't want Thomas to get hurt, and he certainly didn't want to take his ducky, but he also didn't want King George to send him to the pie war too. So he did what the king asked. show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. We join Larry as he follows the tragic saga of Barbara Manatee in the daytime drama Endangered Love. Barbara Manatee, you are the one for me. Sent from up above, you are the one I love. Manatee, you've been so good to me, but I must go into the world and do noble things for the good of all, and you can't come because you don't speak French. Au revoir. But if you need me, who will take me to the ball? Who's going to take me to the ball, Bill? I have a new dress and shoes, a new manatee lipstick. Who will take me to the ball? Take you to the ball, Barbara Manatee! Please don't go! I must! Don't go! I must! Don't! Must! Don't! Don't! Must! Must! Barbara Manatee! You are the one for me! Sent from up above! You are the one I love!
gonna be I always knew you could I really hoped you would Now can we go into the world and do noble things for the good of all? Yes, but first, Bill, will you take me to the mall? I can't dance. You can't? No. I must go. Please don't go. I must don't go. We must don't. Must don't don't. Must must. Barbara Manatee. You are the one. Larry, what are you doing? Jeff, watching a little TV, Bob? Well, maybe you should read a book. Yeah. Okay. This has been Silly Songs with Lab. Tune in next time to hear Bill say, Barbara, I've learned to dance. Follow me, and try to act inconspicuous. Let's have a look at it. It looks just like your other duckies. What? Hold your tongue, infidel! This is the most perfect ducky the world has ever known! It's time for a bath! <gasps> Who could that be? Come in! Thomas! Yes, Thomas! Back so soon? It was astounding! There he was, alone at the front line! But he never gave up! He stood his ground! And this little fellow single-handedly stopped the advancing horde! He did? He's a war hero, sire! Yes. Well, Thomas, I, uh... Incoming! Boys and Barry at three o'clock! I'm sorry. I'm afraid he's lost his mind, sire. The trauma of war. Oh, no. Well, how long will he be like this? No telling. Perhaps the rest of his life. Yeah? Well, we will give him the highest honor of the kingdom. Yes, sire. If he were conscious, I'm sure he would thank you. I'll take him to his room now. Thank you, Cedric. Now, finally, I can take that bath. Oh, I feel just terrible. Oh, that's all right. I still have time for my bath. What? Are you the only one you think about? No. I've been thinking about this ducky for quite some time now. Since Thomas has lost his marbles, he won't be needing it. So come on, help me out with that bath. Oh, great. Come in. I did. I see. And who are you? You remember me. I am Melvin, that slightly odd wise man who shows up every so often to tell you things. Ah, uh, yes. Well, what is it? I have to tell you a little story. Not now. I'm going to go take a bath. Come back at bedtime. It's important. Oh, OK. What's that? It's a flannel graph to illustrate. Ooh, flannel graph. There once was a 
man, a very rich man. He had a lot of sheep, he had a lot of land. He threw a lot of parties, he was dapper, he was tan. Yes, there once was a very rich man. Okay, great story. I'll uh, see you next time. Uh... Wait just a minute. My story isn't done. It's about two men, and I've only mentioned one. Oh. There once was a man, a very poor man. He had next to nothing, just a little lamb. But he loved it like a son, and he fed it from his hand. Yes, there once was a very poor man. Then one day, there was a guest at the house of the rich man. What did he do? Have you guessed to feed the guest of the rich man? Well, let's see. He had plenty of sheep, so he could just share one of his sheep. Not a problem. He took the lamb of the poor man. He took the lamb of the poor man. The rich man took to feed his guest the very, very poor man's lamb. What? Is that a... Is this a true story? As surely as I stand before you today, my story is true. Who is that man? Tell me. To take the lamb of the poor man, when he had lots of sheep of the poor man only had one. Man! For his cruelty, he will spend the rest of his days locked in my dungeon. Who is he? Oh, King George! King, you have many duckies, but Thomas only had one, and he loved it very much. But you weren't thinking about Thomas, you were only thinking about yourself and what you wanted. But I, I... Your Highness, what you have done has made God very unhappy. For whether you are a king or just a kid, God wants us all to think of others first. You have been selfish, King George. And when we are selfish, we hurt the people around us, just as you have hurt Thomas. I... God wants us to love our neighbors, not hurt them. What do I do? What do I do? Here is what you must do. Ask God to forgive you. Ask Thomas to forgive you. And then... Yes? Make it right. Well, King George knew exactly what to do. Lewis, draw a bath! What? Trust me. Okay. I gotta find Thomas. He figured a nice hot bath in the royal tub would help Thomas. Hello? Here, let's clean you up a little. And sure enough, he was right. Hey, where am I? Wow, big tub. Am I in heaven? No, silly. It's just my bathtub. I've got something for you. My ducky! King George told Thomas what he had done and asked Thomas if he could forgive him. After thinking it over a bit, Thomas said yes. Then King George prayed and asked God to forgive him too. Yes, sir, being forgiven felt really great. And the people he had hurt, 
and Thomas and even Lewis by making him do things Lewis knew were wrong felt much better once they knew King George was really sorry. Yep, it was a happy day. So, King George, what'd you learn today? what I learned? Let me tell you. Today, I learned that being selfish doesn't pay. I tried it just the other day. I wanted to be happy. I thought it was the way, but it weren't. I think you mean wasn't. It wasn't the way. Well, now I know just what to do. Before I think about me, I better think about you. So send a message out to every boy and girl. There's no better way to make a really yucky world than being selfish. Selfish. Ooh. It doesn't pay. I tried it. You tried it. Uh-huh. I wanted to be happy. You thought it was the way. But it worked. Work, work, work. Uh, wait, wait a minute. No, it worked. Was it? Work, it, work, it, work. it? It, it should be. No, it worked. Work, King George. Work, work, it work, work, was it? Work, work, no, it worked. Was it? Was it not? No, it worked. Wasn't. And this is a. It's a boat. Actually, it's an ark. No, I mean, why are you building it? Now, Dot, it's so good to see you. Oh, hi, you two. Hey, can you tell me what's going on here? Not before Sadie tells us about the honeymoon. Come on, girl. We want to hear all about it. And don't spare the details. Shem's going to build me a walk-in closet. Wow. Oh, hey, guess what? I adopted a pig. <laughs> Great. He's adorable. Now. Why are you building the boat? Ark. Yeah, Dad wanted to talk to you about that. <laughs> you do understand that this is where my new house Can is I supposed to... Can I tell you to... name my pig Bacon? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely name, all right. Do you know where Dad is? Up top, on the boat. Ark. Dad says he heard straight from God on this. Okay. I'm going to just tell Dad that this crazy project has to stop, we'll unbuild this monstrosity, and everything can get back to normal. Cool? Sound good? Good? Great. Thanks. Straight from God, Shem. Hey, Shem, when you see him, ask him when we're breaking for lunch, OK? One said it would be easy building this old ark. But anything sure is possible when God gives you the spark. <laughs> Sit it right there, please. God's got plans for me and you. Great big things for us to do. When God has plans, don't ask him why. If he says build, you say how. Plans. Hey, Dad! Welcome back, son! How was your honeymoon? Great. Hey, Dad, um, explain to me why you're you're building a giant orange slice boat. Ark. Ark, right where my new house is supposed to go. Isn't it wonderful? God told me it would have to be big. The mess you're making? No, the ark we're building. One morning I was talking with the Lord, and he said, Noah, you gotta build an ark. A really big one. So here we are. Daddy, you're the best. You walk with God. You're honored and revered. Nice of you to say. Build a boat in the desert. Don't you think that's weird? You should be wearing a hot hat. I've got plans to build a life and spend it with my awesome wife. And your big plans are in my way. We'll build your boat, but let's do it another day. Cause I've got plans. Put those on the top deck, my dear. Be gentle. Of course I will. I'm a lady. I've got plans for me and you. I've got plans for us to do. Yeah, but your big plans are in my way. I've got plans. I've got plans. So it's ain't just a way. Not today. I've got plans. I've got plans. I've got plans. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got plans. plans. Now, where did 
I leave that drill? Wait, hold, uh, Dad, wait up! Wow, you bought the whole hardware store. Always have the right tool for the right job, son. Of course, it helps to know where it is. So, Dad, about this monstrosity... Ark. Ark you're building? Uh, I get that God uh, told you to build uh, it, uh, but uh, did he say why? Sure he did. Why do you think I'm in such a rush? 600 years old and you still can't slow him down. Shem, look who we brought you. You're finally here. Hey, Mom! Oh, Mom, it's good to be home, even if I barely recognize it. How are you handling all this, Nema? I, I mean, Mom? <laughs> I'll admit, when I heard what God told your father, I was a little rattled. But I trust him, and I trust God. Now, why don't you sit down and eat? Found it! Relax, everybody. This is only a drill. <laughs> Get it? Oh, Noah, you're such a card. Walks with God and tells jokes. Mom, this looks delicious. Okay, who wants to say grace? Hold on, Dad, please. I've got something I've been trying to ask you, and, and you've got to listen to me, okay? All right, son. What is it? Why did God ask you to build this boat? Because the earth is going to be flooded, Shem. Okay. That's a what? God has seen that no one cares about doing what's right anymore. So he's gonna start over. You re you really? The Ark will save us from the flood. This is God's plan. Dad, this is the craziest, most unbelievable thing I've ever heard. We must trust in God. If we do, I know that he will see us through. There are things we believe. But can't touch with our hands Like the way we know this seed will grow With water and with light If you choose to have faith You must trust in God's plans And have confidence that come what may They always turn out right It's the proof of what we pray for And the things we hope each day so we trust, we trust that God will keep his promise Trust, we trust because he always does Trust, we trust God's word's the surest thing that ever was So we trust, we trust that God will be beside us Trust, we trust he'll care for us and guide us Even when he's sometimes hard for us to see That's when we must trust It's the proof of what we pray for and the things we hope each day for. So we trust that God will keep his promise. Trust because he always does. Trust God's words the surest thing that ever was. So we trust that God will be beside us. Trust he'll care for us and guide us even when he's sometimes hard for us to see. That's when we must trust. <laughs> Dad! Dad! Hey, Dad! Come on, Tutu. Hurry up, boys! Tarn Nation, Tutu! You must be the slowest dog in Kansas! Dad! Dad! Hey, have you seen my dad? Not now, Darby. Miss Poopsie is thirsty. But I... Here, Miss Poopsie, drink up. Don't get jealous, Francine. You're next. How's the floss? It's almost ripe. Great! I want to show him. Now, Daddy, I gotta get old Bessie ready to bring in the floss. We're gonna have a bump of crap <laughs> if we can bring it in on time. And don't forget to check on their old bathroom. Dad, Dad! Oh, Darby, what is it? Look at this, Dad. The land of Haas? Yeah, it's an amusement park that Bobby Bernard went to when he visited his cousins last week. Bobby said that they had this roller coaster that goes upside down and even. One of those bouncy castles where you jump around and you knock your heads together till you pass out! Wow, that sounds like quite a place. But it's very far away. I'm 
afraid we just don't have the money this year, too. Look, I got it all figured out, Dad. We got the piggy bank, right? You said the money you're putting in it is for me. Now, son, that's for your college, for your future. I don't want you throwing it away on... It's not fair. Hey, come give me a hand. You said it was my money. It's ready! The cloth is ready! Oh, we, we can pick it now, I think! Fire up old Bessie! The floss is ready! Oh, oh, all right! <laughs> oh, Bessie! Can... can you fix it? They don't even make parts for her anymore! What about the floss? We'll have to bring it in by hand. But that'll take too long. Twelve hour days. Every hand we got. But... The land of Hans. Darby. Son. I'm sorry. Maybe next year. The bouncy thingy. I'm sorry, Darby, but we're farmers. The crops have to come first. It's not fair. Why don't I get to do what I want to do? I'm done with this lousy farm. It's been a long day. Go home to your families. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Pick the floss, pick the floss. Man, I never get to do anything I want to do. I know what you're thinking. You're wishing you could be somewhere else. Somewhere over the rainbow. I was just like you once. I wanted to go... Over the rainbow? How would I go over a rainbow? It's water droplets refracting sunlight. Well, I just meant... Uh... No, the place I want to go is beyond the barn. Come again? Beyond the barn. Across Kansas. And all the way to the land of Haas. Right. Well... Remember how much your dad loves you, Darby. You really are a lucky kid. How can I be lucky if I'm missing out on all the fun? Life should be a party, but the hot dog's falling from my bun. Somewhere beyond the barn, far from this lousy farm I'll find my happiness I'll do what I like best Somewhere beyond the barn Change the wind I told you your dad wouldn't let you go. He will too let me go. Just not this year. Because of the floss. Of course not. He don't want you to have fun. That's not true. He loves me very much. Listen, kid. Love has its limit. Do what you want to do. Do something he don't like. Then see how far his love goes. It's now or never, Pipsqueak. Get wise, get some money, and go have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere beyond the barn, far from this lousy farm, I'll find my happiness. I'll do what I
We should have done this a long time ago, Tutu. Now we'll do what we want to do. Some storm! What is it, boy? Tornado? Uh-oh. Tutu, what are you supposed to do if you're caught outside by a tornado? Tutu, get out of that ditch and help me remember. What do you do? Are the munchies, and you are in Munchieland. Munchieland? Me? Care for a snack? No, thank you. The munchies think you fell from heaven in your shiny hut. But I know the truth. It is a starship that brought you across the galaxy to save these sweet ones from the evil munchie muncher. A, a star what? The munchie who? But now you and your starship have destroyed it, and you are their hero. Ma'am, it's not a starship. It's an old trailer. Yes, love. Come out, little munchies, and meet the brave sailor who sailed across the stars in his rocket ship trailer. It's just a plain old trailer. He crossed the white sky, past the moon by the bridge, sir, to oh, save my friends from that nasty old muncher. We thank you, sir. We thank you, sir. For saving our good friends. Who would have met the most unpleasant... Most unpleasant end! Had you not happened by in your trailer from the sky! A song about your exploits will be penned! That means written. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your name? Darby. Darby. Can you think of anything that rhymes with Darby? Uh, Ferby? Got any other names? Uh, nope. Just Darby. <sighs> we'll make the most of it. His name is Darby, and he's our hero. Uh, I like my Barbie, but I'm no weirdo. Oh. Like Dana Carvey, <coughs> Robert De Niro. His name is Darby, and he's our hero. His name is Darby, and he's our hero. I like my Barbie, but I'm no weirdo. Robert De Niro, his name is Darby, and he's our hero. He sent across the morning sky and took the muncher in the eye, so lift him up and toss him high. Strike up the band, Darby Love. Who destroyed my munchie muncher? Huh? Who was it? He sent across the morning sky and took 
toss him on cherry in the eye. So lift them up and toss him high. My cup's a gun. Darby's a man. Was you, was it? Do I know you? You're gonna pay for this, and your little dog too. <laughs> hey, enough with the smoke. Oh, you have nothing to worry about. If he shows up again, you can just drop your starship on him. Right. In the meantime, are you hungry? We've got grease balls, cheese meats, two nuts. Thanks, but I'm not very hungry. You see, I'm trying to get here. Ah. Land of Oz, delightful. Do you know how to get there? Oh yes, you need yellow. Yellow? Mm -hmm. Let's see if he's home. Yellow. Uh, yellow. Yellow. Yes, Yellow McToad. He's very old, but he will lead you to the land of hearts. So, all I have to do is... Follow Yellow McToad! Follow Yellow McToad! Follow Yellow McToad! <laughs>